A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God called to Adam and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. To the woman he said, I will intensify the pangs of your childbearing. In pain shall you bring forth children. Yet your urge shall be for your husband, and he shall be your master. To the man he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat, cursed be the ground because of you, and toil shall you eat its yield all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you as you eat of the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall you get your bread to eat until you return to the ground from which you were taken. For you are dirt, and to dirt you shall return. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. For the man and his wife the Lord God made leather garments with which he clothed them. Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing what is good and what is evil. Therefore, he must not be allowed to put out his hand to take fruit from the tree of life also, and thus eat it and live forever. The Lord God therefore banished him from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he had been taken. When he expelled the man, he settled him east of the garden of Edom, and he stationed the cherubim and the fiery revolving sword to guard the way to the tree of life. Verbum Domini. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begotten, and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. You turned man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the char changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O Lord, you have been our
Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritus Lexio Sancti Vangeli Secundum Marcum. Gloria In those days, when there again was a great crowd without anything to eat, Jesus summoned the disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will collapse on the way, and some of them have come a great distance. His disciples answered him, Where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? Still he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They replied, Seven. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute. They distributed them to the crowd. They also had a few fish. He said the blessing over them, and ordered them distributed also. They ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets. There were about 4,000 people. He dismissed the crowd and got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Delamutha. Verbum Domini. Since uh, the Annunciation over 2,000 years ago, we've seen our Blessed Mother give the world motherly and spiritual affection. And she continues to do this for us throughout the ages. You know, uh, we, we have, uh, of course, approved apparitions in the church of our of our Blessed Mother, you know, Guada, uh, Guadalupe, today the memorial of Our Lady of Lords, and also Our Lady of Fatima. And Mary, being our mother, both of course maternally and spiritually, comes just like a mother, and she relieves the suffering of humanity, of course through the grace and power of God Almighty. And we saw this, of course, in the life of Jesus. You know, very, very early on, you know, she's there to, to comfort him, to, to be with him, to, to raise him, to, to nurse him, to mother him. Uh, she, she was very much with him throughout his public life, as, as, uh, standing right next to him, supporting him. And we especially see this, her motherly affection very profoundly during the passion of the Lord. She's one with him right there. She suffers along with him. And why is she doing this? Of course, because she loves her son, but also for love of us. She's one with Jesus Christ in his suffering. She sees humanity suffering. And so she prays as she, as she still does. Prays that we have relief. Prays that, that, we, um, that we have a, a, a deep relationship and that we're close to her son, Jesus Christ. And okay, today again is uh, we we celebrate uh, Our Lady of Lords, and in in this uh, this special uh, um, event here, this is this was a very miraculous uh, event, Our Lady of Lords, and you know this occurred, of course, uh, many uh, years ago, and uh, the first apparition was to uh, Saint Bernadette around the year uh, 1858. And 
Here we see also Mary coming to relieve suffering. And, you know, St. Bernadette uh, and her family were, were very poor people. Um, her father uh, was, was having difficulty finding a job. Uh, at one point, you know, they, they couldn't pay their rent and they were, uh, they, did, they were sort of homeless until someone offered them a place to stay that was an abandoned jail. And in this place here, it was, it was, it was filthy. In fact, they had abandoned the jail because it was in, the conditions there were inhumane. And now, this is back in 1858, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come on, this is the 1850s, and you know, the, uh, you know, the standards, of course, in today's, uh, for today's jails are, are a little, are of course, higher than that. But, but there, and then there was also a very gruesome stench there. And so even though the, there, there comes uh, um, Louise, uh, Mary's, uh, Bernadette's mom, and, and the other children cleaning the place up, but still, it was still, it, it, was, it, was, it still smelled uh, very bad there. And it was a small, it was a small room for, for the family. And again, the, the father could not find a job, and sometimes they would go hungry for many days, you know, without any food. Um, and any food uh, provided, you know, what the father would give to the children, and um, and sometimes he just lay in bed because he was uh, he was starving, couldn't didn't have the energy to do anything, and uh, and, and so uh, they would they had a, a place where they can you know start a fire there in, in, in their uh, uh, residence, and so the the children would go out and and pick um, and and gather uh, sticks for for the fire wood. And so they one day uh, adventurously went out a little further in the grotto of uh, near a place called Masa Bial. And, you know, Bernadette in this particular day was, uh, had a little bit of a cold. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, they had to cross a little, little stream, you know, to, to get over there and it was very cold there. But uh, right uh, before that, um, you know, the, the other girls had, had, had took off to another place. You know, Bernadette was slow. She didn't want to take off her stockings because, or was hesitant at first because uh, the water was so cold. And um, she was there, and, and uh, all of a sudden she saw a woman, a very beautiful young woman, a very, very radiant there, wearing white. And so she was, she was so captivated by, by this great vision and, uh, and you, you know, just stood there. And, um, it was, this was very, of course, edifying for her. And then, you know, the vision stopped and, you know, the, the girls came by and, and Bernadette said that she had went into the water, the water was warm, you know, and um, anyway. But then the, the apparitions continued. And of course, whenever there's these type of apparitions, there's always a little conflict. You know, all, uh, you know people are, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of doubters and skepticism. Uh, and so, so that occurred. And then uh, what's uh, surprisingly, you know, when, uh, towards the end of the apparitions, um, one of the priests there says, ask the, ask the lady her name. And uh, so she, Bernadette went and, and said, well, Ma, uh, wh what is your name? Who, who are you? And the beautiful lady said, I am the Immaculate Conception. And, you know, Bernadette, of course, you know, she, she knew that this was, this was the Blessed Mother, because uh, they, they would pray the rosary together. Um, Bernard, one of Bernadette's uh, favorite prayers was a, was a short prayer. It's, it was, um, O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. Uh, the prayer of the, of the miraculous medal. But uh, Mary, I mean, uh, uh, Bernadette didn't, wasn't sure, didn't know what the Immaculate Conception meant. So she went back and told the priest, this is, um, the Immaculate Conception, that, that's who the lady says. And of course, the priest was astounded because uh, Bernadette, she wasn't, uh, she wasn't well educated. She had very little schooling, and so she had no idea what the Immaculate Conception was. She knew it was something holy. But, uh, but you know, this is, this is, of course, Mary, conceived without sin. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, later on, this explained to Bernadette, and, and you know, this cleared up. But since then and during the, the time of the apparitions, there's been many miracles there at Lourdes. And uh, I remember um, uh, hearing of one such miracle, and it was probably a miracle, the first time I ever heard a personal testimony there 
uh, from there was uh, actually from uh, my geography teacher back in the ninth grade. And um, he had said that, uh, you know, he wasn't living a good life. He used to ride, uh, ride bikes uh, semi-professionally and was in, was in Europe at this one occasion and stopped by Lourdes. And there he, uh, he went and, and saw everything and then decided to go in the baths and, uh, you know, had this, uh, this wonderful experience with the Lord and Our Lady. And his life was changed forever. And, you know, this, this was in public school. I mean, it's a miracle that he was able to, to speak about this without getting fired or anything. Of course, this was about 27, 28 years ago, but, um, you, you know, they still, even back then, you, you, people had to be careful. But uh, just that and a miracle in itself. Um, and so there's been many, many miracles there through, through, uh, through um, Our Lady of Lords. And, and this is why Our Lady comes, and she comes to, to relieve suffering. She comes to, to, uh, to show us much love. But more importantly, she comes to give us to Jesus, to teach us about Jesus. She's mother and teacher. And here today in this uh, reading from the book of Genesis, you know, this, this is after this account that, that was read this morning. This was after uh, uh, Eve, Adam and Eve have committed the first sin when disobedience and sin came into the world. And so there's a, a prophecy here that says that, um, that I will put an enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head and you will strike at his heel. Um, and so in this, uh, th this, the Lord is speaking about the serpent that, um, that, that the woman will strike at its heel. Mary is, is considered the new Eve because it's through Mary and through her yes that, that we have Jesus. That she, she says, she, she consents, you know, the angel says, uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you meaning that you are Mary, you're full of grace from not just this moment, but from all time and all eternity, you have been graced. So uh, her, that means that, that when she was conceived, she did not have original sin. It was, this was a great miracle uh, of hers. And so, uh, so Mary, being conceived without sin, she is the mother of Jesus, the mother of the Lord, and of course, our mother as well. And, and as our mother, again, she, uh, through, her, through, through Mary, she, we have our salvation. Jesus comes into the world to, saves us, to save us. But uh, it, although even through his public life and, and even till now, and even in these approved apparitions, one thing she's always teaching us is she's teaching about Jesus. She's telling us to pray the rosary. This is very important. Now, uh, we see that uh, early on that Mary was, was told um, there were two times when the scriptures say that, uh, that Mary treasured these things in her heart, treasured the life of Jesus, the events of Jesus in her heart. And this is what she instructs us to do as well, especially through praying the rosary, is that she prays with us, along with us, we ask her for her prayers, and what is she doing? She's teaching us about the life of the Lord because every mystery we, we, are, we are praying, we are meditating on a certain aspect of the life of Jesus. We have all the, the mysteries, the, the sorrowful, the, um, the, the luminous, the, uh, uh, this, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the joyful, the, sor the luminous and the sorrowful mysteries of the Lord and of course the glorious. And, and these are all the events of the life of Jesus Christ. And Mary is right there teaching us. It's very important to pray the rosary because it's her way of communicating the life of Jesus to us. We saw this here in the, uh, in the, in, in, um, of course, in, in our, with Our Lady of Lords and, and Bernadette, you know, Mary uh, uh, coming to, to Bernadette and relieving some of the suffering. And, and so this is, this is how Mary relieves the suffering by telling us about Jesus. You know, we have these miraculous events around the different apparitions but, but this, is, this should give us great hope. You know, we, we do live in a world where there's, um, where there's a lot of evil, where there's sin, but yet, you know, Mary gives us, through her prayers, through her teaching, she gives us so much peace. 
You know, and, and a Lord's is an example of this. Mary comes to, to help us relieve our suffering like a mother. You know, you, you mothers out there, when your children are suffering, when they go and running outside and playing around, they fall on the ground, they cut themselves, and there you are, relieving their suffering. There, well, there is Mary, too. Whether, you know, we're suffering from sin, whether we're suffering from illness or, um, or any type of hardship, there she is. And uh, we, we, again, with, the, with Our Lady of Lords, there's Bernadette and her family suffering so much. Well, here's Mary now. The suffering's relieved. You know, uh, they, uh, through, through, of course, this event, you know, they didn't have to suffer as much afterwards. Well, Bernadette did, but not so much her family. And, and so for us as well. So we ask Mary for our prayers to, to help us persevere, especially, you know, uh, in, in, in through the trials we face or the troubles we have, and we could always be assured that through her prayers, you know, we see the faithfulness of God and the promises of the Lord manifested in our, in our lives always. God bless you all.